All right, so I haven't made a video in a while. Uh, a lot of life things are happening. Um, and so, yeah, these are still the way they were. Got those up and just got those, really actually just got those up today. I um, only had, shoot, a couple hours to even mess with those. Um, <clears throat> it's a long story, but I'll, shut, I'll, I'll try to be brief with it. My aunt um, is 87 years old. I may have told some of you before. She was living in a trailer on some land, and it's my mom's sister, and she called me and said, hey, um, my aunt is not answering her phone. Could you go out and check on her? Well, she lives like 35 miles away from me. So I said, sure. And I, so I went out there, and the trailer's 50 years old. Um, the roof was caving in. The floors were caving in. She had no hot water. And I had only seen her on like, well, actually, we used to spend Christmas and Thanksgiving with them when her husband was alive. But when he died, she started going to her family's. And so I basically assumed that her family was taking care of her. I'd call her every so often, whatever, on the phone, check on her. But uh, so I show up and there's all these things. Hot water tanks blown no hot water, floors are starting to cave in, carpet's the only thing keeping her from falling through the floor. Uh, she's wrapped up in a blanket because she has no heat. So, obviously our family wouldn't take care of her. So what I ended up doing was snatching her up out of the trailer, finding her a place to live. The guy next door had been wanting that property for years and years and so we ended up selling it to him took that money put it in the bank for her and found a senior living home for her put her in a senior living home and she did real well for about a year well here about uh, a month or so ago maybe two months ago she uh she fell and broke her knee well after she broke her knee she had to go to the hospital we got her in there we were thinking, okay, she's going to be able to rehab from the broken knee. That's fine. And so took her and got her some rehabilitation type stuff. Well, ended up that um, she fell again in the, in the rehab place. And we figured out pretty quickly that she was going to have to have full-time care, which would basically come down to a nursing home. So... And I'd spin this camera around, but I look like somebody run over me with the truck. But anyway, so after that, I went and found a pretty nice nursing home. It's like $92,000 a year. And I'll tell you guys this, if, if you guys don't know, because it, it blew my mind how this works. But like, so we had the money that we sold our trailer and our land for, for so you can take her to you, you can you can take your loved one to any at least in the United States any nursing home and it, it, let's just say like this nursing home is 5000 some odd dollars a month or it's 188 dollars a day or something like that the deal is is they basically take any asset they have their you know any all their money or whatever like that basically you just pay them until their money's gone. Well, two months before their money's gone, they file for Medicaid. Medicaid steps in and takes over for the rest of their lives. So once their money's gone, they get to live in this nice facility for the rest of their lives, which may be 10 minutes, maybe 10 years. It, it, you know, you just don't know. So she's been in there for a month. Well, two days ago she fell. Um, got up off the toilet, fell and broke her hip. So she went back in the hospital, and since I'm her power of attorney and taking care of her, I've been taking care of all the all the stuff, all the logistics, and running back and forth and visiting her and making sure everything's good. And well, she's got to a point now with her dementia that she's and the pain with and the pain meds, she's not able to feed herself. She's not able to do a whole lot of stuff. So I've been, you know, basically being her 
attorney for her, going up and taking care of business and trying to make sure she's getting good care and all that kind of stuff. So now she's back in the nursing facility where she was. And they called me tonight and said she doesn't want to eat. She won't take her pain meds. So she's being pretty stubborn. And so um, we've called hospice because it's getting close to that time. And so we're going to have hospice go out and help take care of her some. And then on top of that, I found out that uh, my mom has lung cancer. Um, don't know the stage yet. But so, you know, you get to a point in your life, 50s, 60s in that area where, you know, your parents start facing that. And, and my aunt, which is man, she's 87 years old, is amazing. I won't, I won't live anywhere close to that. I'm sure of it. But, um, you know, my mom smoked most of her life. So that, you know, she just... You know, say, you say they say you reap what you sow, and that's kind of I mean, that and genetics and whatever. But still, and I guess there's people that don't smoke at all and still get you know lung cancer. But I'd say that played a pretty big role in it. But anyway, they're going to start treatment on that, so I'll be dealing with that. So that's why I haven't been making videos. And I thought I'd make a you know a quick video, basically, just to let you guys know what I'm doing why I'm not making videos. No, I haven't fallen off the planet. And once I get things back in some kind of order, um, hopefully we'll be able to get back on some of this stuff. I've pretty much almost given up on dropping this big block in here. Um, I just can't get either headers or exhaust manifolds that are gonna fit in there to do what it needs to do. And so I'm thinking about just finding a junkyard 350, dropping it in there for now so I can get it in and out of here. Either that or buy a winch, push it out back and pull it back in when I'm done. But I need to get back on this thing and I don't really want to mess with that right now. All I need to do to this is put those cabinets up on the wall. Like I said, I got those done. These are next. And then I've got those over there. One thing I realized today, since I moved that, that over from there to there, I got to looking at it today. I thought that was a pretty good spot for it. What's that? Mm hmm. What's in here? Mm hmm. Hmm. I wonder if that's flammable. Hmm. I wonder if any of this stuff's flammable. I wonder if that stuff's flammable. <laughs> Well, I got right above that. Now this cabinet's pretty heavy duty, but still that's probably not the best place for that. So uh, I am going to end up moving this and it's still on the dollies that I moved it with. I'm gonna end up moving it somewhere else. Maybe over here, maybe you move the pop machine thing over there, I don't know. I've run out of wall space, so. But anyway, I wanna put all my paint gun stuff up there. Um, I've got some of it up there already. I need to get a couple of more hangers. I'll kind of show you what I got going on here. I've got a couple of my eyewaters in here. I've got the eyewater gun set that I'll probably, you know, put up here or maybe over here or something. But I'm going to get a couple more of those magnet magnetic hangers. Um, then I got me a new cleaning kit. And then my respirator. I think I'm gonna get a couple little matte things just to put in here, some of those little black, just because these are still kind of nasty looking and I just don't feel like messing with them anymore as far as, it just takes it takes a lot of time. I mean, I'm gonna really continue to restore these things. It's just, it's eating my time up. And I need to be, need to be working on some of this stuff over here. Um, I did uh, buy some, Silicone's bronze, silicone bronze MIG wire. And you guys will have to look up silicone bronze brazing, MIG brazing, stuff like that if you want to know what that's about. But you can see there, little gold. And it worked all right. Um, I haven't done any testing on it necessarily, but um, it's kind of an alternative. It, you can planish it down. It's softer than, than regular MIG wire. You, you don't want to use it on structural stuff, but it'd probably be good for patches and stuff like that. 
I, messenger video. Uh, all right, well, I'm gonna let you guys go because I got a video of uh, probably my son calling. So you guys have a good one. Uh, we'll talk to you later.